Hey there, it's Louie, and in this Amigurumi crochet pattern, we're going to be crocheting a dugong. These adorable sea cows are closely related to the manatee, as well as their land cousins, the elephant. These endangered gentle giants are the only marine animal that eats solely seagrass. It's for that reason that dugongs are known as ecological engineers. Because of their consistent grazing, up to 40 kilograms or 88 pounds per day, areas with dugong populations are able to promote faster regrowth of seagrass meadows. This in turn captures a significant amount of carbon dioxide linked with climate change. This pattern is not originally designed by me, however, but by another amigurumi artist, Drew Hill, aka at Drewby's Zoo. This is part of a huge collaboration project that me and four other amigurumi artists are doing to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund, a nonprofit that's mission is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to diversity of life on Earth. Each designer made a different amigurumi pattern for an endangered creature, which you can see on screen now. These patterns are all donate to download. By donating using the link on screen now or in the description below, you can get all of these patterns in the collection, each of which include a full video tutorial just like this one and an interactive PDF with check marks to keep track of progress and time codes to go along with the video tutorial. 100% of the proceeds for digital downloads will be donated to the World Wildlife Fund indefinitely. So even if you're seeing this pattern years later, you can still support the cause. You can learn more about how to support and find all the patterns and designers in this year's collection and previous years at clubcrochet.com slash earthday. And I'll be releasing a new video tutorial for every one of these patterns each Friday over the next five weeks, as well as doing a live stream fundraiser the Sunday after. So make sure to like this video and subscribe down below so you don't miss it when we do those new live streams. Oh, or donate to access the videos early and download the PDF versions, of course. Finally, please share your finished dugong with me and at Drewby Zoo by following and tagging us on social media and using the hashtag crochet for Earth Day. Oh, also make sure to check out all the other designers' social media accounts too. They're all incredible artists that you definitely should be following if you're not already. Oh, and heads up, there is a left-handed video version of this and uh, that you can find in the description as well. And we're working on a Spanish language PDF for each of these right now, which should be available very soon. Also, you can quickly jump around this video by using the time codes down below in the description or at the bar at the bottom of this video. Alrighty, well, I think that's just about it. Let's talk about what materials you're going to need to make this pattern. For this pattern, I'm going to be using the following materials. Now I'm going to be using worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton. That's personally my favorite kind of yarn to use for amigurumi, but you can use any kind of yarn that you see fit. Um, even using like giant bulky yarn might make a really cool looking dugong. So any kind of yarn you use will work. The only colors you're really going to need is gray, your main color. However, it will be nice to have a secondary, a little bit of a secondary color like black to add the nostrils here. For the hook, we're going to be using a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook. That's because it works best with our worst weight yarn. If you're going to use a bigger size yarn, use a bigger crochet hook. Uh, other than the yarn and the hook, you also need some, uh, some safety eyes. I'm going to be using 8 millimeter safety eyes for this. If you'd like to get a bottle eyes just like this, we have them for sale in our shop. Uh, 8 millimeter is my favorite size to use for eyes. You can use 6 millimeter as well, but I think 8 millimeter makes a really cute, adorable, like cartoony looking eye for your dugong. I think it's really great. You also need a pair of scissors, of course, a darning needle. Try using a crimped end darning needle like this. It helps you get in and out of stitches a lot easier. And then besides those materials, to, uh, there are some additional materials that you can use, but you do not have to at all for your dugong. Um, those are white felt like this to add some white around the outside of the eyes. I'll be showing you how to do that in this video. And we'll also be using a little bit of white thread, and that's just going to be to add uh, whiskers to the front of your dugong. But again, those are only optional. You do not have to use those if you don't want to. If you'd like to get a kit with all the materials that you see here, uh, we do have kits available in the shop. You can find links in the description below or on the uh, written version of this pattern. Um, the kits, uh, part of your proceeds, part of the proceeds for the kits do go to the World Wildlife Fund as well. So it, it 
does help um, for the fundraiser as well. Uh, and it comes with the exact materials that I'm using in this video. So it's kind of cool. Um, okay. Well, I think that's everything. Uh, let's get hooking. We're going to start by making the body of our dugong itself. And that includes the top and the tail here. It's all made in one piece. And then we'll add our uh, our little fins here afterwards. But the main part of it, the body, is going to be first. All right. Well, let's get hooking. We're going to start with our gray yarn. Okay, so for this pattern, I'm going to be using our gray yarn, and we're going to start by make, making a magic loop. Now, I do have a full video tutorial that teaches not only how to make the magic loop that I'm going to be showing you right now, but there also is some other additional ways to make the magic loop, and I'll put a link right here or in the description for that. But I will be showing you, and I'll go somewhat slow uh, so that it's great for complete beginners. For a magic loop, we're going to hold the yarn down with our middle finger and our thumb of our non-dominant hand. And we're going to go over our index finger and our middle finger at the same time like this. And then back over it again and then back around the back. Now you want to make an X on the front and two parallel lines on the back. So that way you can uh, use your crochet hook to make the magic loop. Take this end, place it in between your ring and pinky finger. And you might want to take this other end here also and put it in between there. And then close it in and that'll keep it... Uh, held together. Now take your yarn facing backwards towards you so that the two parallel lines are facing you. Take your crochet hook and we're going to go under the first bar and hook onto the second one and just pull that second one under the first and then twist it like this to make a little loop. Now go over that first bar and hook onto the second. You might need your index finger to help guide the yarn onto the hook and then pull that through the loop that you made. The easiest way to do that is really trying to scoop it like that so that you don't uh, accidentally pull through some pieces that you don't want. That's gonna create a chain stitch and now it should keep it locked into position and you can pull it off of your finger. And now you have this little loop. When you pull this tail end, it'll tighten the loop up a little bit and we're gonna work all of our first stitches into this magic loop here. So for round one of our piece, we're going to do six single crochets into the center of this magic loop. For a single crochet, we're going to take your crochet hook and go into the stitch. Um, for this case, in this case, our stitch is going to be the magic loop itself. So we're going to go into our magic loop, then yarn over with the end attached to the ball of yarn over the crochet hook and pull that through the stitch, in our case, the magic loop. And now you should have two loops on your hook. Now going over the stitch, aka the magic loop, yarn over with the end attach the ball again, like this, and then pull that loop through the two on the hook. The easiest way to do that is to really scoop it like the chain, really scoop it through. And that's going to create what is called a single crochet. Now the majority of this pattern is going to be made with single crochets, so it's a really good stitch to get to know, especially if you're just doing crochet in general. For this first round, we're going to do six of those single crochets into this magic loop. So six into the same stitch. So we're going to go, there's our first one. Let's go in there again, yarn over and pull through, and then going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two, one, two. So there's two. Let's do it again into the stitch, pull through, over the stitch, pull through two. Scoop to really make sure you get through there. There's our third into the stitch pull through, over the stitch, pull through two. There's our fourth single crochet. We want two more into the stitch, pull through, over the stitch, pull through two. There's our fifth, and then one more into the stitch, pull through, over the stitch, pull through two. There you go. And that's going to be six single crochets into that magic loop. The best way you can tell is if you look at the V's at the top of your piece here, you're going to see there should be six of them. So if you count over from where this loop is coming out, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six single crochets into the magic loop. Now we can pull this end here, which will tighten up our loop really nice and tight, create a closed hole there. And that is going to be the end of round one. You should have six single crochets into the magic loop. This pattern is going to be worked into uh, in the round, meaning we're going to keep working in a spiral and we never have to turn around. We're just going to keep working into all the stitches that you made in your previous rounds. To keep track of your progress, let's use a little bit of extra yarn as a stitch marker. And this will be a great way to just keep track of where the 
uh, the round begins and ends. I'm going to be using green just like our background, which might end up becoming a problem later on thinking about it now, but whatever. I've already made my decision. We're going to take this end, put it onto our darning needle. You don't really need it on the darning needle, but it works this way. And we're going to go straight through the center of our magic loop with it. And again, this is just going to be so you can keep track of the ends of your rounds. If you have another way to keep track of your ends of rounds using stitch markers, feel free to use that. I'm going to pull it almost all the way out so there's, there's just that little tail end coming out the back. And I'm going to fold it over the end like this. Now, after each end of the round, we're going to work around this tail end and it'll keep track of where the rounds begin and end. Okay, so now we're on to round two. Let's keep that stitch marker over. Now in round two, we're going to be doing uh, a few different weird stitches into all the single crochets that you made in the previous round. But for the first few stitches, you do want to work around this tail end just so it stays locked into place. So the best way to do that is really just keep it next to our first stitch there. That way you can work around it while you're working uh, in a spiral. Now, our first stitch is going to be right here. That's going to be the one directly. If you count backwards six, it should find it. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be this stitch right here. And for each of our stitches around, we're going to work into both loops. Okay, so you're going to work into both of them simultaneously. You don't want to work only into the front loop or only into the back loop until later. Later, we're going to work only in the back loop. But for right now, you want to work into both loops at the same time. Both of these at the same time. Okay, for round two, we're going to do... Uh, for our first stitch right here, we're going to do three single crochets into the exact same stitch. So we're going to take our crochet hook, go into that next stitch under both of those loops at the same time, and we're going to just pretend this other end is not there. We're going to work around it. Yarn over with the end attached to the ball and pull it through that, that stitch. Imagine that's the magic loop. We're going to pull it through that, and then going over the stitch, yarn over the end attached to the ball again, and pull it through the two loops on the hook for our single crochet, just like how we did in round one. This time though, we wanna do three of those single crochets into the exact same stitch that you just worked into. So we want three of them in the same spot. If you look at where this V is getting pointed in right there, that is gonna be where you want all three of the same stitches. So we're gonna take your crochet hook, angle it so it's just where that little arrow is pointing, poke it on through and do our second single crochet, pull a loop through then going over, yarn over, and pull through two. There's our second single crochet into the exact same stitch. Kind of, you can see how it's kind of like two getting bunched into that same place. Let's do one more into that same stitch. Take your crochet hook. You want three of them in the same stitch. You'll go right where that same place you just went into is. Yarn over and pull through. And then going over, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, so that's gonna be three single crochets into one stitch. If you look at the top here, you got one, two, three, and they're all going into that same spot. So we did three in the same stitch. The next stitch right here, we want to do an increase. An increase just means two single crochets in the same stitch. So basically one less than we just did, but in the same stitch. Again, we're just gonna work around this tail end just for this last, this next stitch to keep it into place. Take your crochet hook, go under both loops of the next one. That's gonna be this, these two right here. Place our tail end over that. Yarn over with the end attached to the ball. Pull it through that loop or that stitch. Yarn over and pull through two. That's going to be our first single crochet of our increase. We're going to do another single crochet in the same stitch. Again, look at where that stitch is getting pulled into. You can see that little V there. Take your crochet hook. Go right into that bottom right there. Yarn over again. Pull through the stitch. Going over the stitch. Yarn over and pull through two loops for your second single crochet of that increase. So again, we did three single crochets into the first stitch, and then we did two single crochets into the next stitch, AKA an increase. An increase means two single crochets into one stitch. So if you were to see something like increase four, that would mean you'd do four increases in a row, meaning two single crochets into each stitch for four stitches. Okay, so there's single crochet, increase. Next up, we're going to do just one single crochet into the next stitch. Before I continue, I'm just gonna pull that tail end over and just ignore it. Um, in fact, well, we'll cut the end of this, uh, this tail end at the end of this round. But for our next stitch here, we just wanna do one single crochet. So we're gonna go into that stitch, 
pull through, going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, so we did three single crochets in the first, two single crochets into the next, aka an increase, and then one single crochet into the third stitch. Now, to finish this round up, we're gonna repeat that process one more time. So that means three into the next, two into the one after that, and then one to the last one right here. So let's start with our three into the next stitch. It's gonna be this stitch right here, three single crochets, pull loop through, going over, pull through two. Into the same stitch, we wanna do three. So let's go into the same stitch again, pull through, going over, pull through two. There's one, two, one more time into that same exact stitch, pull through, going over, pull through two. There's one, two, three into that same stitch. Okay, next stitch right here, we wanna do an increase. So two single crochets into the stitch after, so right here, two single crochets, go in, pull a loop through, going over, pull through two. Now one more into that same stitch for our increase, pull through, going over, pull through two. Okay, so we did three into one stitch, two into the next, and then into our last stitch right here, we're gonna just do one single crochet. We go. And that's going to be the end of round two. At the end of this round here, you should have 12 stitches around. If you'd like to count your stitches, just look at the V's at the top of the stitches and count around, and there should be 12. Okay. Let's pull our stitch marker up like this. And why don't we cut this end here? We don't need this long gray end any longer, so we can just cut it pretty short. And I'm just gonna hold this, put this to the side, and we can use this to stuff into our dugong later so we don't have too many, um, uh, too much waste, which is always really nice to have. Okay, so now we are on to round three. For round three, we're gonna do a single crochet into the first stitch, and then we're gonna do three increases into in a row. So one, two, three increases in a row. Again, an increase means two single crochets into each stitch and then we'll do some more stitches after that. But let's start uh, at the beginning. One single crochet into the next stitch. I'm working around our tail end here so that we can keep track of the end. Just one single crochet. And now three increases in a row, two single crochets per increase. So in the next stitch here, we'll do our first increase, two single crochets, there's one, two, into the same stitch. We want three of those in a row, so there's one, Let's do the next stitch here. One and two. There's our second increase. And here's our third increase into the next stitch, meaning two single crochets. There's one and two. So one single crochet, three increases. And let's continue on. Next, we're gonna do three more single crochets to get to the, uh, to the next increases. So three single crochets, one for each stitch of the next three stitches. So there's one single crochet in the next stitch. Here's then one after that. There's our second single crochet into the next stitch. And then our third one here, boom. Three single crochets. Now we want to do three more increases. So an increase into the next three stitches. So here's our first one. Here's our first increase. There's one single crochet for the increase into the same stitch for our second single crochet. There's our first increase done. We want three of them. Let's go into the next stitch right here. Do two single crochets. There's one into the same stitch, two. And then to stitch after that, our third increase, two single crochets, one into the same stitch, two. Okay, so there's our three increases done. One, two, three. Next up to finish this round up, we wanna do two, uh, a single crochet into the next two stitches. So two single crochets in a row. So let's go into this next stitch right here and do one of our single crochets and then into the stitch after it right here to do our final single crochet. And that will be the end of round three. That's gonna be 18 stitches around. So if you wanna count your stitches, again, look at the Vs at the edge of your piece and if you count all of them around, there should be 18 single crochets total for the end of that round. We pulled our stitch marker up. And now we are on to round uh, four. 
For round four, it's actually not too crazy, but we are gonna be doing something new this time. So this time, we're gonna be working only into the back loops of your pieces, okay? So instead of working under both loops like this, we're only gonna be working into the loop furthest away from you. That's called the back loop. And we're gonna do a single crochet into each of the back loops all the way around. That means there's gonna be 18 single crochets total only in the back loops of your piece. So we're gonna find our first one. That's gonna be the one right after that green, uh, our green stitch marker here. So that's gonna be right here. Go only in that back loop, pull through, yarn over, and then pull through two. Okay, so there's our first single crochet into the back loop only. We wanna do that for all of the stitches. So next stitch right here, only in the back loop, meaning the fur furthest one away from us, and pull through, pull through two. There's our second single crochet. One single crochet for each stitch. That's gonna be 18 single crochets total. Let's go into the next back loop. Now, if you wanted to go in both loops, you'd go like this under both of them, but we're only going into this furthest one. There we go. All right, let's keep going around. Back loop, single crochet, all the way around. And this is why having a stitch marker is really nice, because you don't really need to count your stitches as much. But again, you should have 18 stitches around. And hey, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, like this video down below, subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't donated already, please consider donating to the World Wildlife Fund. It helps protect uh, our endangered species around the world and dugongs being one of them. So it really helps uh, the world out and it's a great cause. And yeah, just please support. And then obviously, you know, like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. Okay, two more stitches. There's one. And this is going to be our last stitch right here. Back loop only. There we go. Okay, so that should be 18 stitches around. You can see by working on those back loops only, you can see how it's kind of made our little, like a little platform almost. This is going to be the snout of your piece. So if we looked at our final piece right here, you can see that's what we're making right there. Okay, so that's the end of round four. For round five, we're gonna do something <laughs> kind of weird. Um, this is this is just kind of fun to do for Amigurumi. We're gonna be using a few different weird, uh, different new stitches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by doing four slip stitches, and then we're gonna do ha uh, nine half double crochets, and then five more slip stitches to get to the end of the round. Now I'm gonna teach you what all those stitches mean if you don't know what those mean. But when we make our slip stitches specifically, we wanna make them somewhat loose. The only reason I say that is because it's hard to work into those slip stitches in the next round uh, around if you don't work a little bit softer. Now what these stitches are going to do is it's going to make it so some of the stitches are a little bit, they, they have a smaller height than the other ones. And you'll see what that does later on. It, it'll give our piece kind of a weird curve to it and give our dugong its shape. So we're going to start by doing four slip stitches into the next uh, one slip stitch into the next four stitches. So for a slip stitch, we're going to go into both loops. We, won't, we don't need to work into the back loop only now. We can work into both loops, just like that. And we're going to yarn over like we're doing a single crochet and pull through the loop or through the stitch, but then take that same loop and pull it through the loop on the hook, like that. Try to make sure it's somewhat loose. That's going to be um, your first slip stitch. So a slip stitch is basically like kind of half of a single crochet, which it makes sense because it makes it half the size of a single crochet. So you want to do, uh, let's see, we want to do four of those in a row. So there's one. Let's go into the next stitch right here under both loops, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the loop on the hook for our second slip stitch, giving it a little bit of, of room. You don't have to give it, you don't have to make it too loose, but just have it not be too tight. So there's one, two. Here's going to be our third. Pull through, pull through. And then here's our fourth. Pull through and pull through. So again, that's four slip stitches in a row. Next, we're going to do nine half double crochets in a row. For a half double crochet, it's going to be a little bit taller than a single crochet. For that, we're going to yarn over for our crochet hook and then go into the next stitch under both loops like so. Yarn over again and pull that through the loop or through the stitch. Then yarn over again 
and pull through all three loops on the hook. There should be three total. The easiest way to get through all those to make sure you don't accidentally pull the wrong stitch is just really try to do a scoop. It'll help you get through all those stitches if you're having a hard time. So that's going to be four slip stitches and then nine of these half double crochets. So there's our first one. Let's go into the next stitch here. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over again and pull through, yarn over again and pull through all the loops on the hook. While you make these slips or these half double crochets, you want to actually make these half double crochets a little bit tighter. So if you have control over your yarn, this is hard to say, uh, hard to ask for you to do if you're just starting out crocheting. But if you're more um, used to crocheting, it's really nice to do those slip stitches nice and loose, and then these half double crochets nice and tight. The reason is because these half double crochets, if they are loose, like the slip stitches, it's going to make your uh, yarn have really big holes in it and your uh, st your stuffing is going to be seen through. So it's nice to have your half double crochets a little bit tighter. So there's one, two, we want nine of these total. Yarn over, into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through that stitch, yarn over again and pull through all three loops. Incorporate a scoop to really make sure through that. So one, two, three. Here's our fourth half double crochet. There's our fifth half, half double. Here's going to be our sixth half double crochet. Seven. There's eight. And then one more will be nine half double crochets. If you want to count your half double crochets so you make sure you have them, you can really tell the difference between slip stitches and half double crochets. The half double crochets are going to have this extra like strand in front of them. So you can see how they're like one, two, these are all half double crochets. This one's a slip stitch. It's basically just that those top that top V. But the half double crochets have more height and this extra little strand between them. To finish up this round, we're going to do five more slip stitches, one into the next five stitches. So we're going to go into the next one here and do another slip stitch, pull through, and then pull through. And again, try to make those somewhat loose, not too loose, but just enough so it's not too difficult to get your crochet hook into in the next round. It's one, two, three. It's going to be four. And five. Okay, let's pull our stitch marker up. I actually forgot to pull a stitch marker up the last round, but that's okay. Okay, so that's going to be the end of that round. That was round five. For round six, we're going to do uh, we're going to do a little bit more shaping again. We don't need to use half double crochets for round six, but we will still need to use our slip stitches. To start round six, we're going to do four slip stitches, and then we're going to do some regular stitches after that. For our slip stitches, you want to work into the same stitches that you worked into prior, like this. But it can be kind of hard to get under these stitches because you might make your slip stitches a little too tight. There is your little note, don't do it too tight. It can be hard to do. If it does get tough to do, just really point it right in between there and really push it. Just push it down and in and you'll get through that stitch eventually. Uh, the harder part is pulling it through it. To pull it through it, yarn over and scoop really try to scoop it if you're having a hard time getting through that stitch okay we want five slip stitches in a row so there's our first slip stitch here's our second one pull through give it a little bit more space for your stitch there's our second slip stitch there's our third you can see me kind of wiggling it out this is going to be our fourth slip stitch right there. Okay, four slip stitches. Next, we're going to do three increases. We don't need to use half double crochets anymore. We just want to do regular single crochets. But our next three stitches are an increase, meaning two single crochets in the same stitch. So we're going to go into this next stitch under both of those loops at the top of the stitch. Pull through. And yarn over. Pull through two. There's our first single crochet of our first increase. Let's go into the same stitch, look at where that V is being pointed into, and go right where that bottom of that stitch is. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through two. Okay, so there's our first increase. We want three increases in a row. So there's one, there's one single crochet, and 
two single crochets for our second increase. And here's going to be our third. One single crochet and two single crochets for our third increase. After doing your three increases, you want to do three more single crochets to get to three more increases after that. So a single crochet into the next three stitches. One. Really make sure you're going under only these top two loops here. There's two and three. After doing those three single crochets, you want to do three more increases. So that means two single crochets into the next three stitches. There's one and two, our first increase. Three and four, that's our second increase. And then five and six will be our third increase stitch. To finish up this round, round six, we want to do five more slip stitches to get to the end of the round. So under both of those loops of the next stitch, we want to do a slip stitch. We pull through and pull through, leave it kind of loose-ish so that it's easy to work into in the next round. So there's one, we want five of those, two, three, and you can see how I'm still having struggle to get under them. So it can, can be a bit of a struggle. Four, one more. There we go. Five. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round six. We can pull our stitch marker up now. And now we're into round seven. In fact, for the next two rounds, round seven and eight, it's going to be the exact same uh, round for both of these rounds in a row. For that, uh, for the stitches, we're going to do five slip stitches, 15 half double crochets, and then four more slip stitches to get to the end of the round. And that's going to be done for two rounds in a row. Let's just get started. That's going to be five slip stitches. Go under the next stitch here. We'll go one. Next stitch after that. Really make sure they're looser so it doesn't, it's not too hard to get into it in the next round. There's two. See how I had to wiggle it there because it was having a tough time to get in. There's three. Here's our next one. There's four. And then one more into this next stitch. Again, look at the top of the stitch to find your, uh, where you're going in with your crochet hook. And there is our fifth slip stitch. Okay, so five slip stitches. And then we want to do 15 half double crochets. So we're going to yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops for a half double crochet. Scooping to make sure you get under all those loops. There's one, we want to do 15 of those. So there's one, Two, again, that's yarn over into the stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. There's three, four, five, six, seven half double crochets. Eight. There's nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Get a little bit more yarn. Thirteen. 14, and then one more. That's going to be 15 half double crochets. Okay, so after doing those 15 half double crochets, we want four more slip stitches to get to the end of this round. Did I forget to pull my stitch marker up? I might have. That's okay. We'll clean that up a little bit. So for our next um, uh, four stitches, we want half uh, slip stitches. So we're going to go into this next stitch and just do a slip stitch. 
So we're going to go one, two, really trying to make sure it's loose enough so it's not too tough in the next round, three, and last one right here. It's going to be four. Okay, and then I guess we can pull it, stitch, stitch marker up. I feel like our stitch marker is kind of failing us when, uh, for, for these slip stitches, but that's okay. We'll clean it up a little bit later after we get done with um, these slip stitching rounds. All right, so now we're on to round eight. It's the exact same pattern, five slip stitches, 15 half double crochets, and then four more slip stitches. So let's just get going. Going under the next stitch right here. You can see how that yeah, our stitch marker is kind of getting in our way a little bit. So we're just going to have to figure our way around it. There we go. Oopsies, I did a single crochet. That's supposed to be a slip stitch. There we go. There's one. We want five of these. Two. Three. Four. Last one right here. This one I accidentally made way too tight. That's okay. Well, I'm going to make it work. There we go. So that's five slip stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And then our 15 half double crochets to get to the next slip stitches. Into the top of our loops here, 15 half double crochets. And shout out to uh, Drooby Zoo, the the um, writing, uh, the designer for this pattern. Uh, if you haven't checked out Drewby Zoo yet, uh, he's really popular on TikTok and he's also on Instagram. He makes some really cool patterns. Uh, you can find his patterns on uh, Ribbler, but he's also all over the place. We, in fact, we have done a few patterns together on our in our library. Um, if you've seen our giant strawberry pattern, that is Drewby Zoo. He's a very talented amigurumi artist, and uh, he actually have a, has a book coming out soon. So make sure to check him out. He is a very cool dude. Just in general, he's like, he's just a really cool, funny dude. We get along very well. <laughs> I think we have a very similar sense of humor. Okay, so we only have three more stitches for our 15 half double crochets. There's for our 14th half double crochet, and this will be our 15th half double crochet. And you can see I made them a little bit tight um, because I don't want my yarn or my stuffing showing through at all. Okay, for our last uh, part of this round, round eight here, we want four more slip stitches to get to the end of round. So we're going to go into our next stitch here and do a slip stitch into four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and then here is our fourth. Four. Okay. Pull our stitch marker up and through. And that's going to be the end of round eight. And that's actually going to be the end of our doing our weird slip stitches too. But you kind of see how it's shaping our piece. It's making it pull in like that. Which is giving it like this weird, like this cool shape of like turning. Yeah. It's a very unique, very unique for amigurumi. And I think it's really cool. All right. So now we're on to round nine. Round nine is nice and simple. For round nine, all you have to do is do a single crochet into each stitch around. That's it. We're just gonna do single crochets. There should be 24 stitches total for this round. Uh, in fact, your last two rounds were also 24 stitches. I'm sorry I didn't mention that sooner. But just a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Make sure you're working into the top of the loops like so. Just 24 single crochets around. Okay, we're about halfway there now. Just a few more. And it's always nice to have a few rounds of just single crochets. All right, coming to the end of our round here, I'm working into our slip stitches now. One, oopsies. Two, 
Ah. Did I miss one? No, no, one, two, three. This is our last one. Okay, got it. There's four. Okay. So there should be 24 stitches around now, our single crochets, and uh, that's going to be the end of round nine. Okay, so we're on now on round 10. Uh, for round 10, first off, let's pull our stitch marker up, and actually, maybe we should clean this up a little bit. Well, no, nah, let's just keep it going. We'll clean it up later. For round 10, we're going to do three single crochets and then an increased stitch. And then we're going to repeat that same process six times total. So three single crochets and then an increase, repeat it around. So another three, increase, three, increase, three, increase. And again, an increase means two single crochets into the same stitch. So let's just get started here. We're going to do three single crochets. There's one, two, and three single crochets, and then an increase into our next right here. One and two into the same stitch. Okay, so we wanna repeat that six times total. There's our first repeat. Let's do it again. Three single crochets, one, two, three, and then our increase right here. And this is gonna bring you up from 24 stitches up to 30 stitches. So we're doing our third repeat here, one, two, and three, and then our increase right here, one, and then into the same stitch, two. Yeah, and so you should have 30 stitches around by the end of round 10 here. Two, three, increase. So again, one, two, three, and then an increase right here. One more repeat, three single crochets, one, two, three, and then an increase. One and two. All right, and pull our stitch marker up. That's gonna be the end of round 10. For round 11, we're gonna do four single crochets and then an increase. So we're just adding an additional single crochet between increases. And then we're gonna repeat that process six times in a row. So that's four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then our increase stitch right here. One and two single crochets in the same stitch for that increase. And let's repeat that process six times around. Let's do our second repeat. One, two, three, four single crochets, and then our increase one and two into the same stitch. And this round should bring you up from, uh, from 30 stitches up to 36 stitches. One, two, three, four, and then our increase. So you should have 36 stitches by the end of round 11 here. And I believe 36 stitches is the highest stitch count that we're going to have for this pattern. So you won't need to do any more um, increasing up larger. We will need to use increases again when we get to our, uh, our tail, but I think we don't need to use increases for a little bit. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, and then our increase. And then the last ones, one, oopsies two, three, four, and then our final increase right here. Okay. And that's going to be the end of round 11. You can see our, our pattern coming together there. For round 12, we're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. First, let's pull up our stitch marker, and then we're just going to do one single crochet for each stitch. Again, there should be 36 stitches around. So this is a good opportunity for you to check your stitches if you haven't yet. Um, but just a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. If you haven't yet, consider becoming a Club Crochet member um, if you would like to. Memberships on Club Crochet gets you access to all of our digital patterns. We have, I think, over 200 patterns now, and I add new patterns every single month. And it gets you access to all of them, each of which have a full video tutorial. They have a downloadable PDF 
and you can even get monthly kits mailed directly to your door with all the materials that you need to make whatever new patterns we're adding to the library that month. So this month's uh, new patterns are for all of these endangered creatures, and so a membership gets you access to, uh, or yeah, will get you all them, all those patterns, and a portion of your membership this month of any new signups will go to uh, the World Wildlife Fund. So it is a great way to also help support the uh, fundraiser if you'd like to. However, I suggest if you haven't yet, please consider donating to this uh, fundraiser. It's a really good cause. So please do so if you haven't yet. Okay, so we're on to around our stitch 35, and this will be our 36th stitch there. Pull our stitch marker up, and that will be the end of round 12. Okay, so now we're on to round 13. For round 13, we're gonna add a new stitch to your arsenal, an invisible decrease. But first, we need to get to those invisible decreases. For round 13, we're gonna do nine single crochets and then we're gonna start a repeat. So nine single crochets to start. One, two, three, four, there's five, six, seven, eight, and nine single crochets to get started. Now, after you do those nine single crochets, we're gonna start a repeat. The repeat is one single crochet and then one invisible decrease six times in a row. Let me just get those started and I'll show you how to do the invisible decrease. So again, the repeat is one single crochet, so a single crochet in the next stitch, and then an invisible decrease in the stitch after that. For an invisible decrease, we're gonna go only into the front loops. So the front loops only for two stitches in a row. So that's this front loop and this front loop at the same time. After you go into those front loops, you're gonna do a single crochet through them. Let me show you the easiest way to get through them though. You take your crochet hook and you wanna go up from the very bottom of the stitch like this and point straight up. That's the easiest way to get through just the front loop. Once you're under the first front loop, Spin the crochet hook around like this to get the, uh, to get into position for the next stitch and then go straight up like that to get through the next front loop. Now, once you're into those two front loops, yarn over and pull through those two front loops. Easiest way, really scoop it to make sure you get through all those stitches. And then once you pull through those two, those two front loops, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. Okay, so you're basically doing a single crochet into two front loops at in the, at the same time. That's called an invisible decrease and it's a very good decrease that slowly pulls it in. So that's gonna be one single crochet, one invisible decrease, six times in a row. Let's do our second repeat. Our next stitch looks like it might be there, but it's actually not, it's right here. So that's, that's important that you don't accidentally go into the same stitch. So one single crochet and then one invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, and then do your single crochet pull through, pull through. So there's our second repeat. Here's our third repeat, single crochet, front loop, front loop, single crochet. Here's our fourth repeat, single crochet one, and then front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay, just a few more repeats. Single crochet one, I think that was our fourth, right? One, two, three, Four. Yeah, this is our fifth front loop, front loop, single crochet. And then our last repeat, single crochet one, then front loop, front loop, single crochet for our invisible decrease. Okay, after doing those six repeats, you want to do six or nine more single crochets to get to the end of this round. So that's not too crazy, just nine single crochets one single crochet per stitch for nine stitches in a row. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And that'll get you to the end of uh, our round there. That's gonna be the end of round 13. We'll pull our stitch marker up. And now we are on to round 14. For round 14, pretty easy. We're just gonna do a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. Not too crazy. Just a single crochet into each stitch around. There should be 
30 stitches now after round 13. So round 13 brought us down to 30 stitches. So now you should do a single crochet in each stitch around, and that's 30 single crochets total. So that's, that's not too crazy, you know? Just a nice break, just doing single crochets all the way around. It's a good opportunity for you to count your stitches if you haven't already counted your stitches. About halfway through now. Just a few more. This will actually be the end of our uh, the the head of our dugong. A little bit more yarn. And a few more stitches. One, two, three. Let's see. Three more. One, two, and this will be our 30th single crochet and the end of round 14. Okay, so before we continue on to the uh, tail part of our dugong, let's pull our stitch marker or loop out, and now we're going to be adding our face of our dugong. The first thing we want to do is we want to add our eyes. Now, before we add our eyes even, we want to make our white felt that goes around the outside of the eyes. This is completely not necessary. Here's what it looks like with the white felt, and here's what it looks like without the white felt. It looks pretty good regardless, you know? It just adds a little bit of something extra if you want to, but it's not necessary for your pattern. To add the white felt, you just want a little bitty square of white felt. You don't need very much. Actually, let's get our eyes as well. We're using eight millimeter eyes for this. And again, if you want to get this bottle of eyes in the shop now, um, we have eyes, we have either six millimeter, eight millimeter, or 10 millimeter eyes that come into these little bottles. Okay, so once we got our eyes ready, we want to cut little tiny circles out of this. The circles, I don't really know exactly how big to make the circles. It depends on your safety eye. I would say probably about half an inch. So we're just going to cut a little one. First, you got to make one. So we're going to go ahead, I'm just going to cut straight across like this to make a long rectangle. And then let's go ahead and cut it into a square. Just eyeing it just about like that looks pretty good. And we'll take that little square and we're going to cut this square into a little tiny circle. We're just going to cut off all the edges here. I'm just gonna kind of eye it and make a little circle. If you want other ways to uh, to um, add customization to your eyes, I actually have a video where I explain five different ways that you can customize your safety eyes if you'd like to. Okay, there we go. So we have a little tiny circle like that. You see how that's going to go around the eye. Um, it's going to go a little bit further in, but you get the gist. Now we want to make a secondary circle that's the exact same size. So the way to do that is we're just going to place this circle over that extra bit of felt there. And we're just going to cut around that circle to make our next circle the same size. It's really nice to have very sharp scissors for this part to make sure that you can cut the felt perfectly. I'm just going to keep going around. I'm just going nice and slow, trying to make sure that it's at least as close as I can get to the other circle. Um, we'll probably have to clean it up a little bit, but it won't be too bad. And there we go. So now we have two very small circles. Now this is our second circle here. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. I have just a little bit of felt there that I want to make. I want to cut off to make it a little even. All right, we can throw this felt to the side to stuff it up. And next up for these uh, these little felt bits is we want to make a little tiny hole in the in uh, the the uh, uh, the circle itself. The uh, the hole, however, we want it to be slightly off center. So we don't want it to be right in the center. We want it to be just a little bit off center, like right, like there. Now you can use a needle to just kind of like 
get in there and make the hole. But I find it's actually easiest to just take your scissors, especially if you have sharp ones, go halfway through like that, and just cut a little line to the center. Like that. And then do the same thing up the top like that. It's basically make a little X by cutting through it. Okay, so that'll make a little tiny hole and then I'm gonna use my needle to just get that in there, stretch it out just a little bit. Once you have that hole, you're gonna take your eye, place it right over where that hole is and just wiggle the eye in around that felt. There we go. And you can clean this up a little bit to make it more uh, circular if you'd like. So we can just cut around that top there to make it more like a circle. It's pretty good. Now let's do the same with this other eye. We're just gonna go slightly off center and then cut towards the center. Be careful, don't accidentally cut yourself, obviously. And then we'll cut up and down to make a little X. Turn around. Oopsies. Okay. Take our needle, go right through that. Stretch it out. I like to kind of twist my needle there to help stretch it out. Then get the other eye, place it right in where that hole is, and then we'll just wiggle it until it's in. And there's no specific like size for these little half circles. Um, I just kind of like eye it and then eye it. Ha ha ha, I'm so funny. And then I try to cut them so that they're in a similar shape as the other one. Uh, it looks like this one looks, well, let's put it on the face and then figure it out. Uh, if we want to cut the eye, the white part a little bit more. The specific stitches for the uh, face, you're going to go in between rounds six and seven, about 11 stitches apart from each other, um, on the half double crochet side of the face, not the slip stitch side. So we're not going to do it up here, down here. We're going to do it up here. So we're going to first find between rounds six and seven. So if you count from the beginning here, we got one, two, three, four, five, and that'll be six. The best place I found is like right in between those increased stitches. I'm pretty sure that's where I used it right here. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So if you go right in between that first increase that you made in, I think that's round six. So if you go in between that first increase you made in round six, that's probably the best place to start it. Place one eye right there. And then I'm going to count over 11 stitches from that. Let's open it up a little bit. We'll go from over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That would be right there. Let's see, does that look right? Or should we go, actually, let's move it over one. Let's move it up one, actually. Instead of going between that one, let's go up one right here. So we're gonna go between the first and second increase in round six, and then between the last two increases in the round as well. So right here. That should be 11 stitches apart. And let's see how that looks. Hey, that's not that's not too bad. I got to say that's that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. Now, if you want to, just before you uh, close it, uh, like lock it in, if you want to be sure, um, crochet a little bit more just to make sure, and then uh, then you can lock it in just in case. Um, I think I'm going to, let's let's look on the other ones here and just make sure that's exactly where I put it. Looks like I did it between the increase and that one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's count these ones again, just to make sure. I don't want to mess it up, you know. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna count it. We're gonna do it. Take our locking mechanism, go into the back here, and just pop it on. Boop. 
There's one on. If you want to cut this eye a little bit more to make it more um, like nicely shaped, you can. Place over the second eye. Lock it in there. But yeah, now's your opportunity if you want to cut the eyes a little bit more to make them uh, work better. You totally can. We are going to add a little bit of felt over this. Uh, I mean, a little bit of yarn over that to make it kind of, um, kind of look like a little bit sad, like a little bit curved in there. And that's also going to pull in our eyes to make them a little more indented, which we'll talk about um, at the end of this pattern uh, after we've stuffed it and sewn it closed. But next up, we want to add um, our little... Uh, Let's see. Oh, yeah, we want to add our little nostrils. Of course, we want to add our nostrils. So we want to get our black yarn. You don't need very much of this black yarn. This will be probably just fine. In fact, that's way more than we need, but that's okay. Thread it onto our needle. And we're just going to make two little nostrils on the front. Um, I think it's best to go, like, right here. And this, this part I just kind of eye. I just kind of figure it out. We're going to go down through one stitch there, and then we're going to go up through this one, and then down through a stitch under that one, too. See how that looks? So there's one. And if we go right here, like this, maybe? See how that looks, too. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty simple. We're just doing that. And then once you have it on uh, sewn in there, we'll just take these two ends on the inside and then double knot them uh, together. Try not to pull it too tight or you might pull the nose in a little bit and you don't really want that. So you just want to try to make sure it's tight in there, but not too crazy tight. There we go. And then we're going to cut it somewhat close on the inside. You can see how we're going to cut it pretty close, like right there. And we'll save this thread for stuffing our piece up with later with our extra felt and our other ends of yarns and stuff like that. Okay, so we got our nostrils on there. We got our eyes attached. Um, we'll do a little bit more face stuff at the end of our pattern once we have it sewn closed. Uh, uh, we'll add our little white thread and stuff as well. But now we can continue on in our pattern and we are actually on round 15 of our pattern. And before we continue to this next round, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these stitch markers out. See how they kind of do that like weird like little curve like that? That's because of the slip stitches. They they pull your stitches in a weird direction. But I'm going to pull out until about right here. Uh, just so that we have a little bit more of our stitch marker to use. And so that it's a little bit easier on us later when we need to um, remove our stitch marker completely but you basically just need to go in through and just pull the stitch markers out like that. One more, one or two more I think should be good. I, sh I really just wanted to get it past those slip stitches because I know how difficult those slip stitches are gonna be to pull it out of later on. Okay, this should be a good last one. And we're just going to pull our stitch marker up to pull it somewhat tighter again, like that. Okay. Get our yarn ready. And we're going to continue on to the dugong tail. All right. For this next round, we are going to be uh, working into all our stitches like normal and we're going to start by doing six single crochets and then we're going to start doing that repeat that we did for that previous round that's one single crochet and then invisible decrease six times around but let's start by getting there start by doing six single crochets one two three four five and then one more right here six Okay, after doing those six single crochets, we're gonna start our repeat. Our repeat again is one single crochet and then an invisible decrease six times in a row. So let's start that repeat. One single crochet, one invisible decrease. Again, that's front loop, front loop, single crochet. Six of those in a row. So 
Let's do it in our second repeat. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our second repeat. Here's our third, single crochet, front loop, oopsies, front loop, front loop. I'm having a hard time with that next front loop. There we go, single crochet. Fourth repeat, single crochet, then a front loop and a front loop, and then another one. So that's gonna be our fourth, right? One, two, three, four, two more repeats. Here's our fifth, single crochet one, and then front loop, front loop, single crochet. That's gonna be our fifth, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, one more. Keep losing count. Single crochet one, last repeat, front loop, front loop, single crochet. It's gonna be our sixth invisible decrease. Now to finish up round 15 here, you wanna do six more single crochets to get to the end of this round. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We'll pull this, this uh, stitch marker up like that. And you can see how our piece is coming together. We're pulling it in now, and that looks pretty good. All right, and that's the end of round 15. For rounds 16 and 17, that's two rounds total, 16 and 17, two rounds in a row, we just want to do a single crochet into each stitch around. So that's 24 single crochets total. That's how many stitches you should have per round, uh, but two rounds of those. So that's a single crochet into each stitch around for two rounds. Just, just want to repeat it so you don't forget. So I'm just going to go ahead and do our two rounds of Seven of uh, 24 single crochets per round, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round 17. That's our two rounds of single crochets done. I'm going to pull our stitch marker up there. And now we uh, need to just stuff it slightly. Um, well, actually, in the pattern, it says stuff mostly. Um, we're basically going to stuff the head of our piece now. Let's grab some stuffing. Um, I'm going to use uh, some extra little threads here, too, to stuff it so that we have a little bit less waste. Just some extra threads that I've used, uh, I've cut off of past patterns. Um, it's just a great way to um, not have too much waste when you're when you're stuffing your pieces up. Okay, and then we can also stuff it with our extra little threads here, like that. And I think that's pretty good for, for the start of our stuffing. We will be stuffing it a little bit more later. So uh, yeah, and we'll, we're also gonna do some, some stuff with the eyes here. So don't worry, if you feel like if you feel like your face is like being blown out like that, don't worry about it. We're just going to be sewing them in like this to make it more indented at the end of this, uh, at the end of our piece. Okay. There we go. And now we are on to round 18. So pull our stitch marker up there. For round 18, uh, just a pretty easy round of repeats here. We're gonna do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated six times in a row. Uh, currently we have 24 stitches around. By doing our uh, repeat here, it's gonna bring us down to 18 stitches around. So let's go ahead and get that started. Again, that repeat is two single crochets, one and two, and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. And that re we want to do that repeat six times in a row. So let's do our second repeat. Two single crochets. One, two, and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our second repeat. Here's our third. And then again, this uh, round should bring you down from uh, 24 stitches back down to 18 stitches around. So you should have 18 stitches by the end of this round. Nice and easy. One, two, and then invisible decrease. And then 
one, two, and then our final invisible decrease, front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round 18. For the end of round 18, you should have 18 stitches around, which is kind of cool, I actually didn't notice that until now. Let's pull our stitch marker up here, and now we're on to round 19. For round 19, pretty easy round. We're just gonna do a single crochet into each stitch around. That's 18 single crochets total. So let's go ahead and get that started. Just a single crochet into each stitch around, 18 stitches total. And again, if you haven't yet, please like this video down below, subscribe to the channel, and then also in the comments, let me know what kind of endangered species or endangered creatures you would like to see next, or what kind of endangered creatures you think uh, in your mind need the most protection. Really, either one is a great answer um, because we need to take care of our, our world. We need to take care of our planet and the life that we have here. So let me know what kind of endangered species you'd like to see crocheted uh, next year for our, for our um, World Wildlife Fund uh, fundraiser again, which I'm sure we'll do again next year. All right, and that's going to be the end of round 18. I mean, round 19. You should have 18 stitches around, all single crochets. Pull our stitch marker up, and now we're on to round 20. For round 20, we're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch, and then an invisible decrease into the next. Front loop, front loop. Oopsies. Let's try that second front loop again. There we go. And then single crochet. And you're going to repeat that process six times total. So single crochet, invisible decrease, six times in a row. Let's do our second repeat. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. One front loop and a front loop and a single crochet. And this is gonna bring you down from uh, 18 stitches back down to 12 stitches around. Again, remember that repeat is a single crochet into our first stitch, invisible decrease into the second stitch. And we're just repeating this all the way around till we get to the end of the round. That's gonna repeat six times total. At least that's what it should repeat. Front loop, front loop, single crochet, last bit, single crochet one, and then front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round uh, 20. Pull our stitch marker up here. And now we're on to round 21. For round 21, nice and easy, just a single crochet into each stitch around. That's gonna be 12 single crochets total. So that's it. You just need to do 12 single crochets total. And you will be surprised to know that this is almost the end of our round, actually. We only have a few more rounds left, uh, and that's gonna be, be because we're gonna be making the tail, which is gonna be a little bit fancy, but don't worry about it. I will, I will take us through it one stitch at a time so that we don't goof it up. And then this is a good chance for you to count your stitches again if you haven't yet already. As it gets smaller here, it's easier instead of putting my finger in there to help me uh, get my crochet hook into position, it's easier to actually just pinch the tip, pinch the end like that, and then get into our stitches like so. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round 21. Pull our stitch marker up, it looks like it already is, which is nice. And now we're on to round 22. For round 22, we're gonna just do an invisible decrease into each stitch around. That's gonna make six invisible decreases total, which is gonna bring your stitch count from 12 down to six. Pretty easy. All we have to do is do six invisible decreases. Take the crochet hook and do front loop, front loop, single crochet. And that's gonna be one, front loop, front loop. See how I'm using my, my finger to help get that hook through? Single crochet, front loop, front loop, single crochet. I believe that's going to be one, two, three. Let's do a few more. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Couple more. Front loop, front loop. There's our oopsies. Screw that one up. Let's try that one again. Front loop, front loop, there we go. And last one, really try to pinch it here. It's kind of hard to see it, but it's gonna be this stitch right here, front loop, 
and a front loop, and then our single crochet. And now you should only have six stitches around. I'm gonna pull my loop out a little bit because we're gonna stuff it a little bit more. But I also wanna show you where your stitches are. Um, if you wanna count your stitches around, that's gonna be right after the stitch marker right here is gonna be your first one. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six is gonna be the last stitch where your loop is coming out right here. And uh, yeah, you should have six, six stitches around. That's the end of round 22. Before we continue on to our next round, we just need to stuff it a bit more. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more stuffing. And this time I'm gonna grab more like regular stuffing instead of actual threads, because it's kind of hard to stuff your piece with threads when the end is this small. Um, and I'm just gonna be using the back of my crochet hook. If you have a hard time stuffing in with the back of your crochet hook, it can be really nice to have like a stick. Let me show you. Like this. Um, actually, these end up coming with your, uh, with a lot of stuffing. Let's get this open a little bit more. This actually comes with a lot of stuffing uh, packets. So if you have, if you need one of these, it's probably in your stuffing. They're kind of sometimes just like hidden in there. But the reason I usually like to use the back of my crochet hook instead is because it has a rubber end and it actually grips the stuffing a little bit to help it guide the stuffing in there. There we go. I want to get, I actually want to get all this stuffing in there because this is going to be our last chance to stuff up and we do not want it to be understuffed. Of course, we don't want it overstuffed either, but you know, we just, we want it to be stuffed up a normal amount. And if we don't put our stuffing in now, we might not get a chance to later. It's better now than never. Let's see how our piece is going. See, you can still see that it's understuffed because you can see how it's like not shaped right. So we want to add more stuffing here. And I just kind of like hold the piece into position and then use the back of my crochet hook. I just need to like keep it in place so I know exactly where the hole is that I'm stuffing it in with. And I'm just doing a little bit of stuffing at a time instead of doing like a big batch of it once. Makes it a little bit easier. And I'm kind of just poking into the places where I don't think that there's much stuffing into. So like see at the top here where it's kind of like denting in, I want to put more stuffing right up there. And obviously it's it's easier to feel this than it is to actually see it, but there we go. And you wanna be careful of overstuffing your um, dugong because uh, the half double crochets here really do show stuffing through if you're not careful. So I think that's actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, I like that. All right, that's stuffed fully. All right. So let's continue our piece around. Let's get our stitch marker into place. And now we are on to round 23. For round 23, we're going to do an increase into each stitch around. Again, an increase means two single crochets into each stitch around. We only had six stitches around, so now we're gonna increase up and that's gonna make it into 12 stitches around. So I'm gonna take your crochet hook. I'm actually not gonna work around, well, okay, let's work around the tail end or the stitch marker. Pull our stitch marker over. And now we're gonna go into the next stitch right here. Make sure you're under both of those loops. So you can see I'm kind of under both of those loops there. And then we wanna do an increase. So single crochet one, and then another one into the exact same stitch, two. So there's one, two. And we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around, which is gonna bring you up from six stitches to 12 stitches. There's three and four, two single crochets in each stitch around. This is gonna be five and six. See how our piece is coming together. It's gonna be seven and eight, and then nine and 10. And then our last two into this last stitch right here will be 11 
and 12. Okay, pull our stitch marker up, and that's going to be the end of round 23. Now we're on to round 24. For round 24, we're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch around, so not too bad. There should still be 12 stitches around, and just do a single crochet into each one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round 24. Okay, now uh, we got our stitch marker here. We're not going to work around the stitch marker for this next round because this is actually our very last round. So for this last round, we're going to be making this tail. And this is going to be kind of interesting. Um, I don't think I've ever done this before. Well, maybe I have, but not like this. Um, so it's a very unique pattern here. Uh, basically, what Drewby Zoo is doing is you want to press the tail flat. Okay, so you want to press it flat. And we're going to work into both... Um, we're going to be working into both sides at the same time to close the tail off. So we're going to line it up so that the next stitch is even with the last stitch worked into in round 24. And then we're going to work into both stitches simultaneously. We're going to continue across the row, making sure that you insert your hook into the stitch on the front half and the corresponding stitch on the back half at the same time. Okay? And we're going to do the following stitches into these stitches while I do that. Now, obviously, I'm going to show you what that really means, but it's good to hear it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by chaining one, like that, and then we're going to go into this next stitch right here. We're going to work a double crochet stitch into this next stitch, and I'm going to pull our stitch marker out a little bit. We're going to work into this stitch, and we're going to work into this stitch. That's going to be the last stitch that you did. So we're going to work into both of these at the same time. It's kind of nice to have your needle actually to help, help you uh, know exactly where you're going to work into there. But after you do that chain one, maybe get your needle to, uh, to line it up right. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a double crochet into this stitch, and then we're going to do a picot, which I'm going to show you in a second. It's also called a picot, uh, which is basically you chain three, and then you slip stitch into the first chain that you made. And then we're going to do another double crochet into that same exact stitch. I'm just trying to prepare you as much as possible before we actually do this. So pull our uh, needle out. Well, let's get our crochet hook in place. We can keep our loop out a little bit as we uh, maneuver our stitch around. Pull our stitch marker or our needle through there and take our crochet hook. And we're going to go front or into the first loop and then the second loop right here. Okay. Once you're into both of those loops with the crochet hook on there. Actually, I'm sorry. We needed to yarn over before we did that. Let's pull our loop tighter and then we're going to yarn over so yarn over and then go into this next stitch and then into the stitch across right here at the same time so we yarned over we're going to do a double crochet which is basically a half double crochet but with an additional step so once you're into that loop with the yarn over we're going to yarn over again and pull through both of those stitches at the same time and then yarn over again and pull through only two of those loops one two and then yarn over again and pull through another two loops. One, two. There's our first double crochet. We're gonna work another double crochet into that stitch, but before we work into that, we wanna do a picot stitch or a picot. To do that, we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. We're gonna skip two of our chains there and we're gonna slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. So skip two, one, two, into this third one. Put your crochet hook in there, yarn over, pull through that loop and then through the loop on the hook. This is going to create a little point at the end of your um, tail. Okay, so after doing that picot, we're going to do another double crochet into the same place that you did your previous one. If you look at where the bottom is, it's going to be right there and it should already be lined up with the back of the stitch too. So yarn over, go into that same stitch and out through the other side. Yarn over again and pull it through those stitches at the same time. I'm going to pull my stitch a little bit tighter. 
yarn over, pull through two loops only on the hook, one, two, then yarn over again and pull through another two, one, two, to finish up that double crochet. You see how we're just gonna make a little point at the end there? It makes our little end perfect, beautiful. Okay, so that's our first part of our tail. Next, we wanna do a single crochet into the next stitch. And again, don't forget, that's gonna be into this next stitch and the corresponding stitch on the opposite side. That's gonna be a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through two. And then we wanna do two slip stitches. One into the next two, uh, into the, each of the next two stitches. So here's the next stitch, corresponding stitch on the opposite side. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook. There's our first slip stitch. Let's do another one to the next stitch. Next stitch, corresponding stitch on the opposite side. Pull through and pull through for our slip stitch. And then finally, uh, two more stitches. Next stitch is gonna be a single crochet. Here's our next stitch, corresponding stitch on the opposite side. I'm just gonna kinda wiggle to make sure that we get under all of the loops that we need to. There you go. And single crochet one into that stitch. Okay. Last stitch here uh, on the very end here, we're gonna do it right on the corner just like that. But I'm gonna pull that out. We're gonna do a double crochet, a picot, and then another double crochet. Okay. So first a double crochet, yarn over into the next stitch, just right into that corner like that. Yarn over again, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, yarn over again and pull through two, one, two. There's our first double crochet. Now we want a picot, yarn over, chain three, one, two, three. Skip our first two chains, one, two, into the third one. Do a slip stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook like that. All right, our last stitch for our tail here, yarn over. We're gonna do a double crochet where that last double crochet is. It's again, gonna be right there. We're gonna do another double crochet into that stitch. Pull through, yarn over, pull through two, one, two. Yarn over, pull through two, one, two. It's gonna make our last double crochet and you can see how our tail is coming together. See? All right. Now to finish up this tail, all you wanna do is you need to cut your yarn. You don't need too long of an end, that's probably just fine. We're just gonna pull it all the way through and we're gonna hide this end in. Thread it onto your needle, like that. And we're gonna go in through exactly where that double crochet was made. So right here, we're gonna go in through the side of it like this and then we're gonna go back through the top of your stitch where this end is coming out, right there. In through the top of that stitch and then find some loops on the side. We're just gonna kind of start to hide our end in there. We're gonna pull it through, pull it a little tighter and pull it tighter like that. Try not to pull it too tight. We want it to mimic the rest of our stitches, see? And then with this end here, we can just hide it into the side of a few different stitches and then in through the body and then we'll just come out like, we'll come out like right there. Okay. And then we could just cut this end nice and close like that. Okay. Now we just have a few more things to do before our dugong is finished. You can see the main part of the body is finished though. Um, the first thing is, let's just pull this stitch marker all the way out. Pretty easy, not too crazy. Okay, and we'll put our body of our dugong down to the side right there, and we're gonna get our yarn. And next up, we want to make the fins of our piece. The fins are actually not too crazy though. It's a, it's a pretty easy uh, little addition to the pattern. Basically, we're gonna start with our magic loop. Now I showed you how to do the magic loop in the beginning. Uh, we are gonna make two of these, um, but uh, they're gonna be made the exact same way. But I'm gonna start with my magic loop. Again, check out the description if you wanna find the video tutorial for the magic loop or check the beginning of this pattern to learn how to make it again. 
We're going to start uh, our fins by doing, in round one, six single crochets into the magic loop. Just like how we did our um, our um the beginning of our pattern. So six single crochets into the magic loop. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm not going to use a stitch marker for this fin just because there's only four rounds total. Actually, there's five rounds total, but there's basically only four rounds total. What does that mean, Lou? Well, you'll find out in a second. So after doing those six single crochets, pull the stitch marker nice and tight. And we're going to do, just like how we started our piece, we're going to work around this tail end for a few stitches uh, into our next round. For round two of the fins, we're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. It's not going to be too crazy. There should just be six single crochets total. So find your first stitch right here and keep count as you go around. We're going to wiggle our way into our first stitch. We're doing a single crochet into each one of these stitches. I'm going to work around this tail end just for like three stitches. And we're just going to do our single crochets around. Let me redo that. See how I went? See how that piece has it like kind of halfway through the stitch there, right there? It's because I didn't get all the way through all the ends. So let's do that again. There we go. That's a lot better. So six single crochets total. There's going to be one. Here's our next one. Two. Next one over is going to be right here. Pull it open a little bit. There's three. After, do I, after I do three, I'm going to pull this tighter and... Pull that end over to the side. Do not cut this. We will need it at the end. So that's three. Let's continue around. This will be four. Here will be five. And then this next one right here is going to be our last stitch. Six. Okay, so now you have six single crochets around. That's the end of round two. For round three, we're going to do two single crochets, then two increases, and then two more single crochets. This is going to bring you up from six stitches up to eight stitches for round three of your fin. Let's get that started. That's two single crochets. Here's our first stitch. One. Two. And then two increases in a row. So let's do our first increase right here. It's going to be... There's our... First single crochet of our first increase and our second single crochet of our first increase. Now we want another increase into the next stitch right here. It's going to be one single crochet and then one to the same stitch will be two. So there's two increases in a row. And then to finish up round three, you just want two more single crochets. One and two. Perfect. Now you should have 18 or eight stitches around. That's the end of round three. For round four, we want to do two single crochets and then two invisible decreases and then two more single crochets. So we're going back down from eight to six right away. And that's going to pull it in just a little bit and make it a nice shape for the fin. So that is again two single crochets. It's going to be one single crochet and two, and then two invisible decreases. So we're going to go front loop only, go around front loop only, and then single crochet. It's going to be one invisible decrease. Let's do a second one. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay, there's two invisible decreases. And then finally, two more single crochets, uh, one into each of the next two stitches. Okay, make sure you're into both loops for this next single crochet. And we're going to do one single crochet, and then one more at this last stitch right here will be our last single crochet. Okay, that's going to be the end of round four. Now for round five, we're basically going to be doing what we did in that tail. We're going to 
press our piece flat, uh, and we're going to work into both the uh, last stitch we worked and then uh, in the next row so that both halves are crocheted together, and we're going to close it tight. Now these are all going to be, th we're just going to do three single crochets basically, um, but we're going to work into both sides simultaneously. So first, chain one. Next, go into the next stitch. I'm going to pull my loop out just a little bit. We're going to go into this next stitch here and into the last stitch we made, which is going to be all the way over to here. Okay, so we want to go under both of those at the same time. Now make sure this tail end is sticking out the top like that, by the way. Keep it over to the side. We're going to need it to sew onto the piece. So we want to work into both of those at the same time, and we're going to do a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through both of those at the same time. I'm going to pull a little bit tighter for my piece, and then pull through both for our single crochet. So that's going to be one single crochet. Now into the next stitch and the corresponding stitch on the opposite side. We're going to do another single crochet. And then last one right here, we're going to go into this next stitch and the corresponding one on the opposite side and do one last single crochet. There we go. And see how that pulled it right flat in, in two? And it pulled it together. Finally, to uh, finish up this fin, I'm going to chain one. You can just cut and pull through, but I like to chain one, give it a little bit of an end like that, like this, and then pull it all the way through to make your fin. Okay, so there's your fin there. You can see how it's got a bit of an angle to it. See how it's got that big bit of an angle? That's exactly what we want. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get our second fin made really quick, and then I'll be back in just a second uh, to show you how to sew these fins on and then add our final bits of details uh, for our um, dugong. So I'll be right back in just a second. Okay, that's going to be the end. Uh, I made my second fin there. Now we have two fins. You can see them. Okay, so let's show you how to attach the fins. We're going to attach the fins along the inside of the body. Now, there are very specific places that uh, uh, Drewby Zoo has added in his pattern. He says, attach the fins along rounds 12 to 15 on either side of the body, with the bottom of the fin curved towards the snout, meaning like this towards the snout instead of like this away from the snout. Okay, so you want it towards the snout. Now, I kind of find that the best way to do it is just kind of line it up, find where you want the first one, and then line up the second one and find where you want that one and sew it on. The way to sew on these fins is you're going to have two ends coming out of the same place if you kept that tail end in the same in the right spot. The first end right here where you chained one and cut and pulled through, that's the one that you're going to start with. So I'm going to thread that onto our needle, and we're going to line this up. I'm going to go like right like this. Like that, maybe. And we're gonna let's just place it where we think we're gonna want it. I think that's a pretty good spot for it. Yeah, I like that. So it's gonna be one, two, three. We're gonna start right here. So we're gonna start into this stitch, come out through the next stitch up, and we're just basically working our way up. After you go through one stitch, you're gonna go around the stitch on the fin, in through the stitch you just came out of on the body and then out through the next stitch on the body. And we're gonna do that for each one of them. There's one, I'm gonna pull it tight after each one. Next stitch on the fin, same stitch on the body, out through the next stitch on the body. And then in through the next stitch on the fin, in through the same stitch on the body. And then I'm gonna come out through somewhere near the bottom of the fin right here, just like that, and pull it pretty tight. Gonna pull it nice and tight there. Now we're gonna thread this other tail end from the fin onto our needle. We're gonna place it right where that end came in, right here, and then come out through the same place as you came out with the other tail end, like that. And then we could just double knot these two ends on the inside. One, two. Cut the end nice and close. One, two, like that. And then I just take my the back of my needle here and I'm just gonna push 
those threads back into our into our piece. And that is going to be how you sew on one of the fins. Now I'm going to do basically the same thing on the opposite side over here, um, but the other way around. I'm going to thread first our end with the chain, but you do want to line it up and it does come through slightly different stitches. Basically, place it into place where this other one's going to be. Make sure that the end's coming right, right like that. See, when I, if I did it on the same one, one, two, three down from the eye, one, two, maybe like right there is where we want to finish up the fin. Okay, so then if we want to count back, we want three places to sew in and then one place to start. So that's going to be one, two, three, and we want to start one down right here. So we're going to start here, go up a stitch, and then do the same thing where we're coming out through the body, in through the next stitch on the fin, and then into the same stitch on the body, then out through the next stitch up on the body. Pull it tighter, tight, and then do it again on the next fin stitch. Next fin stitch, into the same stitch on the body, out through the next stitch on the body right here. Two, and then this last one, into the body, out through a stitch just under the fin, like that. We're gonna pull it nice and tight. Make sure all those pieces are sewn in there. Looks pretty good. Now thread this other tail end onto our needle. Go in through the same place where you started and out through the same place where you ended. Nice and tight. And then we're just gonna double knot it, cut, and then hide that end in. And there's one, or there's actually two last things that we want to do um, before our dugong is totally finished. I mean, you can finish it here if you want. If you don't want to be extra, you don't want to go the extra mile. But, I mean, what fun is that, you know? Let's add some detail. Let's add a little bit of something, something to our, to our friendly dugong friend. Our friendly dugong friend. The first thing we want to do is we want to make it so that these eyes are pulled in slightly like that because they do have a little bit more of indented eyes. And while we do that, it's nice to add a little bit of eyebrow to the eye that makes it look a little bit kind of sad. Um, I, I just kind of like that look a lot. You don't have to do it that way. You can instead just like pull through a stitch and pull through a stitch and just pull it tight and you don't have to add these eyelids. But I kind of like adding these eyelids. I think it adds... Um, it adds something to it personally. So we're going to cut a little bit of an end here, thread it onto our needle. We're going to come out through some stitch on the head, on the top of the head right here, and then come out through just above one of the eyes. Pull it just so we have just a little tail end to sew, uh, to double knot to. And then we want to go uh, across the eye. You can either go like really far across like that, or you can go just like right directly down like that Would, wouldn't be bad. See how that kind of makes it like a little bit sad looking, but it's kind of cute though too, you know? So we're going to go through that stitch. Then we're going to go all the way across and do the same thing on the opposite side, right above the eye. Let's see how this one looks before we pull it too much. Yeah, like that. It's not bad. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Out through the top of the eye, just across from the eye, or on the bottom rather, and then come out through where this other end is, uh, the tail end is coming out. Just like that. Make sure the white of the eye is under that stitch. Boom, boom. And then all you need to do is double knot here at the top. And the tighter you knot it, the more the eyes are going to sink into the body. You don't, I don't think you need it to be too sunk in. Like, I think that's, that looks pretty good. Double knot it there. And then we'll just cut it nice and close. And we'll just squish it and it should hide into our piece. Okay, so that's going to be how you sink the eyes in if you want to add a little bit of a sunken eye bit and add a little eyebrows uh, simultaneously. And then the last bit is we want to add some white thread 
for the top of our, or for our whiskers. So we're gonna take just a little bit of this white thread out. This is actually way more than you need, but that's okay. And the these, the whiskers, I kind of just have them like somewhat loosely in there and just cut them really nice and close so that they don't come out. Um, if you want to secure these a little bit more, you might want to double knot them or something on the inside as you stuff them through. But I kind of find it's just fine just to like have them kind of barely sticking out. So what I like to do is go through a stitch, come out through an, a corresponding stitch on the opposite side of the nose. Like that. Get a little bit more of our yarn here. There we go. And twisting it just to keep it in place. And then pulling it almost through, like that's probably way more than we need. And then doing a loop, a bit of a loop, and coming through another bit on the face, across, and come out through another corresponding stitch. And we're gonna leave that loop Okay, so leave that loop like somewhat open like that. And we're gonna do the same thing over here through the next part of the nose and then out through another part of the nose, leaving a bit of a loop. It can be a pretty, pretty big loop if you want. It's not that big of a deal. And then one more time, let's go through, um, let's see, yeah, let's go through right here and then out through right here. Looks pretty good. And this last bit, we do need to keep a loop on this side of the mouth, but on the opposite side of the mouth, we actually don't need to make a loop. And then all you need to do is cut all the loops like that. And then cut all these ends pretty short, like just barely poking out of the of the nose there. Oopsies, that one actually got pulled out. So he's only gonna have three whiskers. If you wanna add more, all you have to do is go through a stitch and come out the other side and then pull it tight. And then I just kinda like, like, I don't know, fold them down a little bit. And then you have little whiskers. Not necessary, but does add a little bit of something to your um, your dugong there. Thank you so much for crocheting this dugong along with me and supporting the fundraiser. If you haven't yet, please make sure to like and subscribe down below and check out the other patterns and designers in this year's Earth Day collection, especially this patterns designer at Drewby Zoo. Here you can see some of the other designs that we have in the collection. Thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. Bye. So long. Doesn't that seem like how we talk? Goodbye. Thanks for watching, guys.